Hey lovely, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lovely Channel. Today I am sharing with you some summer meal recipes. I'm gonna share with you three full dinners plus a dessert, a drink, and we're also gonna have an afternoon tea time. And I'm gonna give you a look at what my family theme nights consist of because a lot of you have been asking on Instagram for that. And our whole family theme night that I'm sharing with you is an Israel Bible theme that is inspired by my Artsa box that I received. Artsa is a quarterly subscription box and it's all about the Holy Land being delivered to you. They follow the footsteps of Jesus with each box. Like this month's box is all based on on Jesus' child and home, Nazareth. So all the products in each box come from Israel and are made by Israel-based businesses. They deliver the best artisanal food, crafts, and content from Israel to your home. So if you wanna check it out, you can use my code LOVELY15 in the link below to get 15% off your first box. But I will share more about Artsa with you later in the video. Let's go ahead and get into our first recipe. So for tonight's meal, we're doing a crock pot meal. I love crock pot meals in the summer just because I can have them going all day and it's not heating up the house by using the oven. We're gonna be doing crock pot chicken and it's just a really easy chicken that kind of falls apart after it sits in the crock pot for hours. I am going to be adding in carrots and green beans, but zucchini is also good. You could do sweet potatoes. You can add onion, whatever, um, mostly anything is gonna work in here um, with the chicken. So all I did for this recipe is I took some avocado oil spray and then I also put a couple tablespoons of olive oil and then I put frozen broccoli. I originally said I was gonna do green beans but I ended up doing frozen broccoli and this recipe is nice because you can use frozen or fe fresh vegetables, they both work. And then I also put some carrots that were not frozen in there. And then I just put my chicken thighs, they're boneless, skinless chicken thighs that I used. You can also use chicken breast. Um, you can do this with a whole chicken. You can do this with bone-in chicken. You can really, any chicken you want, you can do for this recipe. So I personally love the chicken thighs. I just feel like they have a lot of flavor and it's nice because I don't have to worry about the bones when I'm pulling everything thing out um, it makes it really easy but I just layered that on top and then for my seasonings I did salt pepper and then this organic non-salt seasoning that we get from Costco if you are just new to the kitchen or you feel like you're not that great at cooking you can't mess this recipe up it's so easy anybody can do it um, and then I also put some minced garlic on top that's optional I just feel like it adds more flavor um, to the vegetables into the chicken of course and then I covered the whole thing with a um, quart of chicken stock or a pint or a quart just whenever those carton and then put the lid on set it on low for seven hours it can take seven to eight hours okay so it's later in the afternoon now and I want to get my drink started that we're gonna have tonight for dinner because it's infused so I want everything to kind of sit in the fridge for a while together we're going to be making a cucumber ginger lemonade I was originally gonna do cucumber mint which would also be delicious but the store was out of mint leaves so we're doing ginger today, which will be delicious. It's just a super refreshing and sweet drink on a hot summer day. Perfect. Oh. So the lemonade is very simple. I just put about a half cup to a cup of lemon juice in the bottom of a pitcher, and that's just gonna depend on if you like a lighter lemonade or if you like more of a heavy lemon tasting lemonade. I'm adding four of these small cocktail cucumbers. I just sliced them up. You could do like half a large cucumber or a whole small cucumber and just slice it up and you know just slice it um, and put the slices in there. And then I took about a half teaspoon to a teaspoon of ginger depending on how big of a fan of ginger you are. And I just peeled it and then grated it and added that into the mixture. Filled it up with water and then I used some glycerite, it's a sugar-free liquid sweetener and I used about 14 drops of that in the pitcher and stirred that all together and I'm going to put it in the fridge and it'll be all ready for dinner. For dessert, I have my little dessert helper here, my Sun River. Um, we are making some chia seed chocolate mousse. This is one of our favorite recipes. We actually do all different flavors but the chocolate one is definitely one of my favorites. Um, and you just use chia seeds as a base and it makes this delicious but healthy mousse. So all I do is I take two tablespoons of chia seeds for every serving that I am making. 
I am making four regular servings plus a little serving for River. So I just did eight and a half tablespoons for this. And then I did four tablespoons of cacao powder. This is gonna give it that chocolate flavor and look. Um, so to do about a tablespoon per each serving and then this is just an extra thing You don't have to do this, but I thought it was would be really yummy. I added these cacao nibs and I did um, About two tablespoons of these in there just to give it a little bit of a crunch um, And kind of it's almost like chocolate chips. You could just put chocolate chips in it, too If you prefer <laughs> this little guy is just snacking on what we made and then you can use an extract if you want for some extra flavor I decided to add a half teaspoon of almond extract vanilla would also be good or you can get it really rich and chocolatey with a chocolate extract um, and then I put a whole can of coconut cream. And then for sweetener, I use the glycerite sweetener that we also use for our lemonade, but you can use whatever sugar-free sweetener that you prefer. And I needed about 16 drops for um, the entire thing that I was making for all like the servings and everything. That's how sweet I wanted it. But just add in your sweetener, mix it up, and then taste it to see if you want it sweeter or not. And then you're just gonna go ahead and pour it into your dessert cups, whatever you're serving it in, bowls, whatever. And then you're gonna refrigerate it. It usually takes about an hour to two hours to like kind of thicken and harden up. Once it thickens up, I'm gonna slice up some strawberries, put these on top, and then I'm gonna top the strawberries with a little bit of erythritol sweetener and some of more of the um, cacao nibs. I thought that would be really delicious. So that is a really nice, cool, and delicious summer dessert that you can make that's really easy and healthy too. Me make the dessert and you just started eating the cocoa powder and got it all over. Oh my gosh, it's all over. Smile. <laughs> oh yeah, you made the cocoa powder mess. Look at your shirt. <laughs> you got cocoa powder all over you. <laughs> Hands up. One of mine and my family's absolute favorite summer side dishes is my homemade coleslaw. So I just buy a coleslaw mix. We usually get the fresh express one from grocery outlet and that's just one of our favorites. But any coleslaw mix will do. We've also had ones from Trader Joe's and I make my own dressing. So the base of this dressing is about a quarter cup of coconut cream, a quarter cup to a third cup of coconut cream about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and then a tablespoon of lemon juice. And then I actually do sweeten it a little bit with more of that glycerite sweetener we've been using. Um, and I do about four drops of that. And then I just season it with salt and pepper, mix all that together, pour it over the coleslaw and mix all that together and let it refrigerate. Sometimes I make this right before dinner and it's only in the refrigerator for like 10 or 15 minutes and it turns out good. Other times I let it sit in there for a couple hours and it's really good, nice and cold. It's so refreshing and it just has like a sweet tangy taste to it. Today we are doing our family theme night, but rather than doing an actual family theme night, we are having a family theme afternoon tea. And everything that I show you for this afternoon tea could also work for a brunch or a lunch, just depending on what you wanna do. So normally to come up with family theme night, um, we've all come up, like everyone in my family has come up with a few ideas. We wrote them on pieces of paper, put them in a jar, and then every week or a couple of weeks we'll pull one out. And that's what we'll do our family theme, theme night on. It can be anything. We've done Italian theme night, we've done Hawaiian theme night, um, and it could be like, Old West, it could be based off a movie, it could be like a Cars theme night, it could be anything. Just things that you and your family enjoy or wanna try something. Um, and then what I will do is I will decorate the table kind of inspired by that family theme night. I keep it simple, I only use things that I have, so just get your creative juices going, try to come up with something cute but simple. And I make a meal based off of that theme or inspired by that theme. And then we usually do some sort of activity or game or watch a movie based off the theme as well. So our family theme afternoon tea is all 
um, Israel Bible based and it's all based off of the things I got in my Artsa box. This is the Nazareth Artsa box. It is shipping this month. Um, they only have 50 boxes that they're making um, for this month. So if you want one, you need to order one now before they run out. So Artsa is the Holy Land delivered. These are all items um, that come from Israel. They're from, most of them are family owned companies in Israel. I was so impressed when I received this box and I opened it. I just felt like I was a part of the community of Nazareth when I opened it. I got to see an inside look of what it's like there and experience these different foods and these different decor items. So one of the dishes we're actually going to be making is this shakshuka recipe, which is a traditional um, Israel breakfast, but we're going to be having it with our afternoon tea, but that's also why I said this would be good for brunch. Um, so there is a recipe for that in here, and you'll also receive this shakshuka blend um, spice, which is amazing. We actually tried some the other day, and it was really good. And then I'm making some cookies that we're going to be using this apple, pomegranate, and honey spread in. This stuff is delicious. And then I also got some shalva tea that we'll be using for our tea. We also got this Reveal Israel Match Quiz and Spin Game. So that's going to be our activity that we're going to do. And I think even River will have fun with that because he can like do some of the matching. So for today's afternoon tea, I am making something I've never made before called hamantaschen cookies. And hopefully I said that right, but it's actually a Jewish cookie that is normally made during the Jewish holiday of Purim. But they are a lot of fun to make. And I did find a recipe on Pinterest for this um, and information about the cookie. So I will have that link below, but I did kind of substitute some things. I made them gluten-free and vegan. Um, but I had to change things around to what I had on hand for ingredients. So for my cookies, I actually did a half batch. So if you look at the link below and you make the full batch, that's why my measurements are different. I did a half batch. So I used about um, a cup to a cup and a half of gluten-free flour. I just made my own flour mix. You'll see my cookies came out darker because they have chia seed flour in them. So that turned the cookies darker. And then I used a half teaspoon of baking soda. And then you need some sort of egg substitute. You could do flax eggs or chia eggs. And I just used some of my chia flour I had and made a chia egg. You just do one tablespoon of the chia flour or you could use flax meal and then you combine it with three tablespoons of water and kind of let it thicken up. And then I added in about two third cup of a sweetener. I use this sweet leaf granular sweetener, but you can use monk fruit or stevia, like whatever sweetener you prefer. Just make sure you taste it and it's sweetened to your liking. And then I also used a quarter cup of coconut oil, quarter tablespoon of vanilla extract. And then I used a quarter cup of um, one of River's food pouches. It's kind of like an applesauce thing. You technically need applesauce, but you could use banana or just any sort of like fruity puree. So we have these fruit purees from Costco. So I just use some of that because that works too. <laughs> so I just combined all those ingredients in my stand mixer. And once it formed a dough, I put it in the fridge just for a few minutes to prepare my workspace. Um, I pull, pulled out my um, rolling pin and my mat that I roll out my dough, my pie dough or my cookie doughs on. So I rolled out my cookie dough to about a half inch thick. You're going to use a round cookie cutter or you could use the top of a jar lid like I did to cut out your cookies and I just put those on a non-stick baking mat on a baking sheet. Um, you want to preheat your oven to 350 so you might want to do this now so that they're preheated and you can put them in the oven by the time they're done and then you're going to use some sort of jam or preserve for the filling and this was perfect because I had the spread that I got in my Artsa box. So it's apple, pomegranate, and honey spread. So I just put um, a little like teaspoon to like a half tablespoon, I'd say, um, in the center of each of the cookies. And then you fold them up. You're just gonna kind of like pinch three edges of the cookie to make it into a triangle. You just pinch the dough together and it stays. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and pop them in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes and your cookies are done. So now we are gonna make our shakshuka and I'm using the recipe that came in my Artsa box with a few substitutions. Now normally shakshuka would have poached eggs on top, but my husband and my son both cannot have eggs. They actually both have a slight allergy to eggs, so 
I was looking up some vegan options for egg and people were adding beans and mushrooms to their shakshuka um, just to give it more protein and then like have something more substantial to it. So I decided to do that and it turned out delicious. My family is obsessed with this now. We're, this is gonna be a regular thing we make from now on. So first, since I'm putting mushrooms in my shakshuka, I actually just took a baking sheet with a nonstick um, baking mat on it. I put my mushrooms face down and I drizzled a little bit of olive oil on top, um, put a sprink little sprinkle of salt and put it in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes and then I did broil them for like two minutes at the end and you're just gonna let those cook while you're making your shakshuka so all I did was add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to a cast iron skillet and heat it up on a medium high heat and then I chopped up one onion and two bell peppers and added this to the oil and cooked this for a little bit just till it got kind of nice and golden and tender and then I crushed and peeled five cloves of garlic added this in there let it cook for a minute or two so it gets fragrant once my garlic is fragrant then I'm adding in my spices I just did a pinch of paprika a pinch of salt a pinch of pepper and you're just gonna like stir that together, let it cook for about a minute. And then I added in a can of diced tomatoes and a can of black beans. And then you also add two tablespoons of your shakshuka spice mix, which, oh my gosh, this stuff is so good. And then you're just gonna turn the heat down to like a medium low and let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. And after my mixture has been simmering for about 10 to 15 minutes, I'm taking my mushrooms out of the oven and I'm gonna just add those um, on the top of the shakshuka and still let that simmer for about six to eight more minutes and then your shakshuka is done and you can just top it with some chopped parsley if you want and I'm new to shakshuka but um, it says that you serve it with warm bread so I was looking this up and it seems like you would use like a flatbread a pita bread or just any type of bread and you actually dip the bread in the shakshuka and you eat it that tonight I'm making an artichoke and olive salad it is super easy all I did is chop up half an onion just diced it put that in a bowl and then I also chopped up some canned artichoke hearts added that in there um, I cut in half a can of olives just sliced them in half put them in there just the black olives but you can use really any olives you prefer I've also done this with Kalamata olives and it was delicious um, and then I just seasoned it with salt, pepper, oregano, rosemary. I added about two um, cloves of minced garlic and then you're just gonna put as much olive oil as you want on top of that, mix it all together, put it in their fridge, let it get nice and cold in the fridge and it turns out delicious, a perfect, refreshing, cool side for summer. So here I have my baked zucchini slices. These are so good. Now, I don't usually like to use the oven during the summer, but this is an exception because it's so delicious. It's literally one of mine and my family's favorite sides. So all you do is you're gonna take however much zucchini you want. You could also use yellow squash tonight. I have two zucchinis and two yellow squashes and you're just gonna slice them up, put them in a bowl and you're gonna mix together whatever seasonings you want in there. I used salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder, but you can, you know, mix up the seasonings to do whatever taste you like. And then you're gonna add in your oil. I used coconut oil and it just depends on how much zucchini you have, how much oil you're gonna use. I used about three to four tablespoons. You do wanna be somewhat generous with your oil, but you don't want them to be soaking wet. Um, and then this is the, the two big ingredients that you need that are like the secret, I feel like, to this zucchini. You need to put some baking powder. I just generously sprinkle it like kind of on the top layer and then mix it in. I probably use about a tablespoon to tablespoon and a half for this amount of zucchini. And then I'm going to put a ton of nutritional yeast. It's so good. It kind of gives it just like a little light crust and then gives it a little bit of that like cheesy flavor and it's so so good i put it in with all our spices and everything and i probably did about two to three tablespoons there and then after i mix everything together in the bowl i line a baking sheet with some tin foil and i spray it with some cooking spray 
put my zucchini on there and then I add more nutritional yeast to sprinkle more on the top and it's delicious. And then I just place it in the oven at 375 for about 20 minutes and then I usually like to broil it for a couple minutes at the end just so it crisps up a little bit more. So now for our main course, our mahi mahi, which is cooking in the pan now. All I did is I made a little seasoning rub for the fish. I put together a teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, a half teaspoon of garlic, a teaspoon of orange peel, and a half teaspoon of cilantro. I just mix that together. For this meal, I'm using the frozen mahi-mahi um, fish that you can get in the freezer section at Costco, and I just let it thaw out in the fridge overnight and throughout the day. Um, and so I just open up those packages. I put them on some paper towels to make sure the fish was really dry. I seasoned one side. I prefer to cook the fish in a cast iron pan. I just really like the flavor it gives. Um, and I put two tablespoons of ghee in there. You can use butter or oil, whatever you have. Um, and just make sure you have it on a medium high heat. Make sure that your butter or oil is completely melted and it's heated up so that when you put the fish on there, you get that sizzle like we can hear in the back. And once you have your fish in the pan, you can go ahead and season the other side, which I'm gonna do here. Just sprinkling that season all over. You'll cook it for about three to four minutes on that first side. You'll see the fish actually starting to cook up and even on the top around the edges, it'll start to look cooked. And then that's when you know it's time to flip it over and you'll cook it for another two to three minutes on that other side. And then you're gonna pull your fish out of the pan. And then in the pan, you're gonna add a little more ghee, about maybe two to three tablespoons of ghee. Um, you're gonna add a tablespoon of lemon juice and two cloves of minced garlic and you're just going to kind of mix that together just so the garlic starts to get fragrant and this is going to be a little garlic butter sauce that you're going to drizzle over your fish when you go to serve it and then i also like to sprinkle it at the end which is a little bit of extra orange peel and it's delicious making my version of Korean beef over cauliflower rice and we're gonna have a side of sesame seed almond broccoli. So first I like to get my cauliflower rice steaming. So I just use a steamer in a pan filled up with some water and I use the uh, frozen bags of cauliflower rice from Costco. These are just the easiest ones. I am using two because I am making enough food for four adults plus one child. Um, so you can always half this recipe if this is way too much food for you and your family. And then for the Korean beef, I'm just gonna put a couple tablespoons of sesame seed oil in a pan on medium high heat. And then I'm gonna add in my ground beef. I use two of the organic ground beef packets from Costco. So I'm just gonna cook that until the meat is brown and as it's cooking, I'm adding some salt and pepper to season the meat. And then I diced up an onion and I diced up two bell peppers. And I'm gonna add this in there just as the meat is almost finished so that those can start cooking and getting nice and tender. And now I'm gonna make a sauce that is gonna go and cook with the beef the rest of the time. So my sauce has a cocoa aminos base. I put about a half cup of cocoa aminos in a measuring cup and then I'm adding one cup of water. I'm also going to add some salt and just a little dash of crushed red pepper. This adds just a tiny bit of heat, but it's not too much. I'm also adding about two cloves of minced garlic. And then this is the big thing that makes this dish amazing, and that is fresh ginger. So I'm peeling it and grating it. And you want about two teaspoons of that grated ginger. This makes the dish just pop and it, it tastes amazing. So you mix all of that together and then you're gonna pour it over your ground beef, onion, bell pepper mixture. And then you're gonna wait for it to come to a little bit of a bubble and then turn the heat down to a medium low and let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now this dish is more on the sweet side and has a little hint of spice, but it's also really good when it's just like that spicy and sweet taste. So you can also add some sriracha in it for some heat. Um, I would just start with a half teaspoon. If you wanna do that, mix it in, taste it, and then you know add as much as you want until you get the desired heat level you want. And then I just serve it over the cauliflower rice. We're also making a side of some sesame seed almond broccoli. 
So all you do is put about a tablespoon of sesame seed oil in a pan, have that going on medium heat, and then I added in one bag of frozen broccoli. You could use fresh broccoli too if you want. And I just added in some salt and pepper, we're keeping it super basic. Um, just mix that around until the broccoli gets nice and tender. And then at the end, I am taking some slivered almonds. You can use as much as you desire. And I'm just gonna toast these in there with the broccoli just for about a minute or two because you don't want them to get soggy. You still want them to have a little bit of their crunch, but you just want them to get lightly toasted. And then that is just a super easy but delicious broccoli side. <music>